Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about IP addressing and basically Ethernet communications. So communicating through Ethernet, it involves uh, the open system interconnection model or the OSI model. And the model is made for computing systems to communicate with each other without the need for understanding all the um, underlying internal structure and technology that uses. So think of it like um, sending a letter. You write a letter on a piece of paper. The language in which you write it is actually the protocol. And then you sign it at the bottom, which is your signature. It's like a physical um, identity for you. And then you put it into an envelope. And you have all the information on the envelope. You stick it in the mail and it appears at the other side. No issue. There's a lot of things happening. You don't really care about that. That's similar to what's happening with the Ethernet protocol and Ethernet that's on your system here. So the first thing we need to do is actually look and what is an um, uh, IP address. So an IP address, it's up here. It's basically um, a user defined numeric label that is 32 bits long. So it's grouped into four bytes and an example as we see up here is 172.16.254.1 so that would be an example of an IP address and so the other thing we have to talk about a little bit is the MAC address so the MAC address is also called the physical ad address or physical location of what you're trying to communicate to and that actually is a 48-bit address and it's grouped into six bytes of information and an example of that would be, uh, say, 0002A1BC7233. And it actually gives you a physical location. And that's really what we want to do is communicate to that physical location. Now, when we talk about Internet or IP addressing, you also need to think about the subnet. And what we have is subnet mass. Now, all that will do is determine on your network, you can split these up into subnets. And the subnet mask will ensure that your subnet remains to that group itself. So the subnet mask must match typically in order for everyone in that subnet to communicate to each other. Now, Everyone will have a, a IP address, but there are reserved private IP addresses used for us to use at will. And there's three different classes of them, A, B, and C. Um, and the first one, um, so these are reserved for our independent use. So if you look at your workplace, you'll notice usually it's a 10.0.0.0 to 10.255, 255, 255. So those we don't have to register or anything to ensure that people know where to find us so these are all private so that's why when you first purchase a router you always get an address of 192 168 and something else so what we're going to do is let's uh, take a look at uh, communicating to a click plc so i'll call it the software here and what we'll do is click online. Okay, we'll change this to our ethernet. And currently right now, I have an IP address of 192.168.13 with a sub mask of 255.255.255. The default gateway just tells me where I'm gonna to go to get to the internet. And up here, I can see that it automatically has scanned my network and has determined that I have a PLC the IP address is 192.168.0.10. The submask is 255.255.00. There's the part number, and it's saying it's in run mode right now, and the status is good. The MAC address, so the physical uh, location is, or physical number, is this right here. So right now, I know that my uh, IP address, okay. Um, does not match what I see here. Okay, that's mainly because they, it is 
a 1 there and a 255 there, but submask is not the same. So when I hit connect, it should give me an error. So I'm doing that right now, and what you'll see is it's not matching. So two things have to happen. We'll have to change our submask, and we'll have to change um, the IP address. And the IP address that we should use is a 1 there and a 255 here so that the information then can be the same. We'll say OK. And let's just edit that. So that's our, our default one. So let's set manually. And so what we want is 192. Um, 192. one and ten and our sub mask 255 255 255 we hit okay and now here's what we have and that should match and as soon as we hit connect sure enough we come up with we're now online and we're currently in the run mode so that's it it's uh, very straightforward um, and there's one other thing I just want to mention is that in order to troubleshoot this, um, there is a program called Wireshark and Wireshark will actually allow you to monitor your ethernet connection and actually look at individual details of everything coming on and off your network based on your, your, uh, ethernet, uh, port that you're monitoring. So it's a very useful tool. You can actually see the protocol and you can actually understand a lot more when they color code all the different protocols that are being used. All right, that's it for now. If you have any questions or uh, need further information, please give us a call or a shout. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe for to make sure that you're always on top of everything that we produce. Thanks for watching. 